Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Um, uh, can you guys see the full screen of the slide? Yes. Yes. The pre previously, the previous group only see the presenters uh, slide. So, uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone uh, for spending the time. So basically, this uh, this is your your first week uh, in the this uh, mini rotation two weeks, right? Of uh, community medicine and family medicine, am I right? Yes. Okay. You have done uh, family medicine for two weeks, I believe. So now yes, you are. Bro. Okay. So how many of you in the group? Twenty three. I saw 20, 23, 22 people here. Twenty two. All right. Good. Okay. Um. My session today, I try to make it uh, not not that uh, that hectic because uh, I believe today and tomorrow you're going to learn about uh, practical biostatistics. Um, so my task is trying to help Dr. Adil by giving the uh, basic or essentials information with regard to the practical session. So before you do statistics, you must know certain things. When you learn statistics, they are many aspects of the academic of the principle of biostatistics that normally people learn uh, that's why in some university the uh, biostatistics or statistic courses can and go up to three four credit hours and uh, it is uh, a lot of things a lot of fundamentals and many of which you already learned when you were in secondary and metric actually I believe so you have learned all those things o only that now trying to put that into uh, the applied aspect of statistics. So I'm trying to give you uh, all those things. So I have uh, myself um, divide the, the, the sections into, into uh, actually the whole practical sessions uh, is divided into three. Uh, one is what I'm trying to give you today and uh, now, uh, which is the fundamental or the essentials of statistics. And Dr. Ade will cover number two and number three, which is the practical part of it. And we talk about practical part of it. There are two parts. One we call descriptive statistics. The other one is analytical statistic, descriptive versus analytical. So, I that, that will be the simplest um, description about the practical session about doing statistics. There are two way of doing statistics. One to describe only, and number two is to compare to analyze analytically. Uh, the the big difference is that <clears throat> uh, if you want to uh, to know which one is descriptive, which one is comparison. A comparison, normally you have a hypothesis. You want to prove hypothesis. And uh, hypothesis is uh, uh, whether A is higher than B, for example. Uh, so, so those are hypotheses. And you will have hypothesis if you have something to compare with. If you don't have anything to compare, you do not have hypothesis. Example like, you want to measure the prevalence of hypertension which is a single variable, hypertension, yes or no. How you measure hypertension, you take the BP or you may ask history. The patient might have normal BP, but he is known to have hypertension. Therefore, the, even though the BP is normal, but the patient is on treatment, he is still considered as hypertensive, right? So I hope you understand that, 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 that is, that's definition. Still, it is a one variable, which is hypertension or not. So when you want to measure the prevalence of hypertension, well, there's one single variable, we call that descriptive statistics because you are not comparing unless you want to compare hypertension this year and last year. So now there's the word compare there. Compare hypertension, prevalent hypertension this year and last year. You want to see whether the prevalence going up or going down. All right. So for that particular intention, it has actually two variables, not one. Because why? You have hypertension and year okay one variable is the year one variable is hypertension okay don't uh, think properly the variables are i said two because you have one is hypertension yes or no second is the year not uh, when i say two variable it is not a hypertension this year hypertension last year no 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 that's still hypertension so you have two variable one is hypertension status yes or no and then the year this year 2020 or previous year 2019 all right so there's two variable because of the two variable and you want to compare 
it become number two, which is analytical statistics. So I, I hope I got it clear with regard to what you should do eventually. Whether you use SPSS, you use R, you use Tata, that's just a tool. You have to know the tool, but the reason is statistics. Either describe, describe a variable, a data, or to compare, or to test hypothesis. I hope that's very clear. So for the, for the next half an hour, 40 minutes, I try to cover number one, which is the fundamental or essential of the statistics. And there are four things I would like to cover here. Representativeness, relationship, level of measurement, description of data. And trust me, uh, these four um, I mean, uh, aspects of uh, statistics that I would like to cover is if you want to read, it's become a few books already. Uh, example number two is uh, causality relationship. So those is a huge topic in statistics. Okay, first and foremost, I would like to mention about representativeness. Statistics is about representing. Um, you talk about uh, COVID-19, for example. Uh, are you going to represent COVID-19 for Malaysia, COVID-19 for Pahang? So uh, are you talking about COVID-19 as a whole where you don't put any geographical boundaries. For example, like you want to look at signs and symptoms of COVID-19. For that kind of uh, objective, you do not put geographical location. It doesn't matter where the patient is. You want to know the signs and symptoms. Remember that one. So one aspect of, uh, of uh, but that, that, that statement, uh, signs and symptoms of, of COVID-19, do not represent geographical population, but it represents who? COVID-19 patient, regardless where they are. Unless you believe that the symptoms is very peculiar to certain location, ah, then it's different. So that is where representativeness here represent a geographical population. I hope you can differentiate. Example, like I want to do a study with regard to diabetics, people with diabetes mellitus. So it doesn't matter, isn't it? Whether people are the diabetics in Malaysia, diabetic in US, diabetic in Singapore, doesn't matter, doesn't really matter as long as you want to study about diabetics. But you want to study about hypertension just now. So, and then government want to plan how much effort, how much money they want to uh, reserve for this effort. So obviously you want to know the status of the in Malaysia, therefore the representativeness here is geographical related. Okay, now for, for us to understand about representativeness, I'll give you this uh, scenario. You know that um, we, we, we make our deduction, we make our conclusion, we make our statement based on what we observe. But the problem is that not everything that we observe is the truth. Something that we see small may be very big, like the iceberg uh, photo uh, slide I showed you here. So uh, basically, what we observe is the sample. But what we try to infer, I mean, from, from those samples, is the population, big picture of it. You may see only part of it, but you sometimes when we, we want to make conclusion, you want to generalize the conclusion or infer the conclusion into a bigger picture, into the target population. Uh, you might have learned about research methodology already. You know about study population versus target population. This, the population where you do the study, we call study population, but the finding you, want, you may want to infer to the target, which is maybe bigger in terms of size, in terms of uh, the spread uh, population. So sample and population. Okay, sample is a group of people from the population. You observe only this sample, but the, the inference is for the whole population. So statistics is about the sample because you calculate the sample. But when you got the result, you try to infer, especially in the discussion part, you infer back to the population. All right. So statistics is about representing sample to population, all right. And here, population here, again, yeah, population can be geographical population or can be the shared attributes. Example like, all people with diabetes mellitus, all people with hypertension, all people with COVID-19. So I hope you understand that's very clear. Population does not always relate to geographical boundaries, all right. So a simple example, I want to give this very fast. So you want to study about Peninsula Malaysia or Malaysia uh, as well. I don't want to put to to to, to map to big map, map here. 
So you want to represent the peninsular Malaysia. So you, that these are all Malaysians you have in uh, in the peninsular Malaysia. So the critical point, the critical I um, mean uh, characteristics or, or, or the principle, so that the sample here you have the sample here you have the sample here, uh, uh, which is very small uh, small sample, but this is very big sample. So uh, the most important uh, criteria must be is that everybody here in the population here must have equal chance to be selected. So that's one of the important characteristics if you want to represent a population, especially geographical uh, kind of uh, location kind of population based on location. Everybody in that particular area must have equal chance to be selected. So those are the principles when Dr. Zubay taught you about, for example, uh, simple random sampling, cluster random sampling, uh, all those uh, random sampling. Random means everybody have equal chance. Okay, then you can represent certain area, geographical location, all right? Now, so statistics is about representing a sample to, to the population. So how well uh, the, the, the statistics represent a population? So statistics, um, uh, characteristics of the sample we call statistics, characteristics of the population we call parameter. That's why statistics estimates parameter. Statistics here means uh, any calculation made to the, the sample. Parameter is from the population. The problem is, for Malaysia, for example, we know the statistics from the sample that we studied, but how well do we know the parameter? We never know. So if we do not know the, do not know the parameter, how can we, we, we make sure that the statistic is as, as accurate as the parameter? Hmm. We, we do not sample the whole Malaysian because we can't afford to sample the whole Malaysian. So we, sam we sample part of it. We study only a sample of Malaysians. But when we got the, the value, prevalence of hypertension, for example, the same, same, same example, prevalence of hypertension, how do we know that this prevalence is valid? How do we know that this prevalence represents Malaysia? So the best thing about statistics is able to tell you how good your estimate is how good your result is. Okay, estimate is uh, the, the, the term we use for the calculated values. Yeah? So how good the estimate is. How do you know? How can you measure how good the estimate is if you do not know the reference, which is parameter in this case, right? So that's how, that's, that's where statistics able actually to, uh, to estimate the parameter, even though we do not really do the uh, study the parameter, the entire population, no. How? This is the example. I give you uh, one group of uh, what circle or ball, you call it red and blue color. So let's say the prevalence of uh, red colored ball here is uh, 18 over 35. So altogether we have 51.4. This is, this, is, this is population. This is the, all, the, all the ball or circles that we have. This is the population. So imagine that we can't afford to sample all this uh, population. We can't afford. So we sample. We are. We can. We can sample only six at a time. So this is only the first study that we can do six at a time. So if we, for example, randomize the the ball properly and then we select six, we may get three over uh, three three rate. So it it give you uh, the prevalence of fifty percent. Right. So but then I I told you just now fifty percent here is actually the estimate from the sample. So this is the statistics. This is actually the parameter for the population. But in reality, you will never know this, this value. You won't get this value. You only have this value. But somehow the, the software, SPSS, ERK, ERK, whatever, they say that, oh, this is very, very accurate. But you never know the actual value. This one, of, in this example, of course, I, you, you, you know the, the value. But in reality, you do not know the value. So now, what if we do a simulation? So this is the first, uh, uh, first sample. Let's say we do a simulation, statistical simulation. We put back all the six balls inside the big group, and we sample again. You may get the second sample. This time, maybe you may not get three. You may get only two. So that will give you 33%. All right? So we put back again all these six balls. We do the third one. You may get even now. One possibility is three, the other possibility is less, the other possibility is more. 
so you get more red colored ball so this gives you 67 percent uh, so this simulation right simulation so if 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 this is the actual population and the population is 51.4 percent so if you random uh, all the balls here properly really randomize which one from these three most most likely will occur which one anyone which one a the first one right yeah because this is uh, 50 50 around 50 50 so most likely you will get this one more frequent than the others more frequent than the others all right because this is a uh, uh, true representation of the population even though you do not know the actual parameter so what if now in this simulation how the computer knows the parameter when they do not sample the parameter in the first place if i added up all this prevalence 50 33 66 and i divide by 3 i get 50 percent and this is the estimated parameter and these are all your statistics individual statistics and then if i compare this one 50 and 50 so they are very accurate this one the 33 and 50 they are not accurate at all they are under um, calculated this one is over calculation but you know that if you, you do the simulation many times you will get more of, more often the first scenario therefore eventually the value i mean most of the time the value should be almost similar to the estimated parameter so what statistics what the software do when we do any analysis is that they will do this simulation at the back end we never know they will do the back in the back end and they will, they will tell us what is the estimated parameter if everything is randomly distributed so the keyword here is that everybody the way we sample must be random and the one that happened here also must be random therefore you will, they are able to the statistical software the, the formula able to calculate the estimated parameter therefore we only do one sample so we got then we can measure how accurate the, the statistic compared to the parameter so now we'd like to stop here for a while anyone understand anyone confused let me know do you get it okay. i have a question yep. so uh, it means that uh, we have to do many simulations so that the the statistic the, the estimated parameter will be uh, nearer to the actual parameter you don't have to do the software will do for you you only do one study let's say uh, in your study you start you want to study people in kuantan uh, do you do many sam sampling no you do only one right you calculate sample size you need 100 people but kuantan have 200000 people you only have you sample let's say let's say 300 people let's say you calculate sample size you, you need 300 so you randomly select kuantan people 300 how many times you will do that only one right you don't you don't put all the the 300 back and you sample another 300 you don't do that right therefore how do do do, do the computer eventually got the estimated parameter at the back end they will they will simulate automatically remember when you are in uh, secondary school you learn about ncr npr remember remember no oh my god uh at maths ncr permutation okay 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 uh, permutation. Permutation. and okay, okay. r small r so n p ben when you use a c when you use permutation so those are the, the 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 statistical tool for the software to calculate the estimated parameter you only do once you only calculate the average you may calculate the proportion the prevalence but at the back end you do not know the computer calculated already for you and then they will give a result whether your result is precise or not precise you see so so this this calculation here this simulation here is not done by you you only do one study only but the concept i'm trying to tell you here is that whenever you use any tool any statistics you can uh, you can calculate the estimated parameter however nowadays we don't calculate manually anymore the computer calculated automatically very fast automatic for you 
you run, you you got the estimate, and you also got the confidence interval. How good is your this estimate is? You got the estimate. Let's say the prevalence, forty percent, and then how good is this forty percent? The confidence interval, or the standard deviation, or the standard error. So these are the 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 complement, the the variability of this this measurement. If this measurement is very accurate, the variation must be small. If this estimate is uh, not accurate, the variation must be it should be very big. So it can be from ten to ninety uh, percent. You got forty percent, but it can be anything from ten or ninety percent of the time. It can be from ten to ninety percent. So definitely, it is not accurate, right? Uh, not not accurate at all. So if forty plus minus one percent, that's very accurate. Forty plus minus five percent, not that accurate. Acceptable accuracy. So those kind of uh, statement. You understand? Yes, bro. All right. Now we go to the second part, the big part. We jump. Okay. Um, statistics most of the time is about relationship. You want to study whether A cause A causing B or not, A cause B or not, lung, smoking causing lung cancer or not, poor diet causing hypertension or not. So, statistics is is a, is a lot about relationship. Uh, when I talk about relationship, I'm talking about the second level of uh, statistic, analytical statistics. You have now a two variable. If you have only one variable, you can't measure any relationship. So when you have two variable like this one, the green color independent variable and dependent variable. So if you have you are studying relationship, this arrow here is important. If you are looking at this arrow, so you are looking at the relationship. If you are not interested to study relationship. So this arrow is not important. You will analyze this one in the uh, individually and this one individually. So if there is no arrow, you do not have to um, to to describe or, or to assign whether which which one is dependent, which one is independent. No need. But if you are studying the relationship, then the the role of each variable in the relationship is important. So example like a poor diet and hypertension. So poor diet must be the independent hypertension should be the dependent variable. You to be hypertensive or not depend on whether you practice poor or good diet. It cannot be the other way around. An example like um, I practice uh, poor diet because uh, I am hypertensive. Uh, is that true? No, right. So this must be logic enough uh, to say. Um, whether A causing B or not. So in in terms of regression analysis, we use this equation. This is very familiar equation to everyone, I believe. Y equals to mx plus c. Remember, y equals to mx plus c. So this is similar. Y just I just changed the alphabet uh, uh, symbols. Uh, beta naught plus beta one x one. So basically, there are two variables y and x. And how much x influence the y is the beta one here. That's the, um, the 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 slope, uh, the weight, how x affect the y, and this is the constant. All right. Uh, so I hope you understand. That's very simple. Uh, simple diagram. Obviously, uh, you have only y one y here and one x. In reality, there can be multifactorial, multi independent variable. So you can have uh, only one y here and many x's. Beta one x one, beta two x two, beta three x three, blah blah blah. So you are doing now multivariate analysis. This is bivariable analysis, only two variable. Okay. Uh, the next I may not. Um, uh, so this study about causality, x causing y, is a huge topic. Um, and every book that you read, you will come across this term: a rooster's. A rooster's crow does not cause the sun to rise. Rooster crow does not cause the sun. Ayam berkokok tidak menyebabkan matahari terbit, isn't it? Uh, because every time the uh, ayam kokok, matahari terbit. Every time matahari terbit, ayam kokok. So ada uh, the rooster's crow uh, cause the sun to rise? No, they may be uh, 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 they may be correlated, but not, does not imply causation. The rooster's crow and the sun rise is related, but they are not cause. Uh, I mean, the rooster scroll does not cause the sun to rise. It's quite simple analogy, but this is a textbook analogy. Okay. okay now, um, Judy Pearl, uh, th that that book actually you can read Judy Pearl book causality 2009 from Cambridge. Um, you can even have the YouTube, but uh, 
you can attempt to listen to the YouTube, very good YouTube, but it's very academic. So another person who has coined the word causality and relationship is uh, Bradford Hill. You know about Bradford Hill criteria, there are nine guidelines uh, for causation uh, uh, proposed by uh, Sir Austin Bradford Hill, uh, Hill criteria we call it. So Sir Austin Bradford Hill mentioned, uh, I like to quote this one, I have no wish in, in a very 1965, yeah? I have no wish, no the skill to embark upon a philosophical discussion of the meaning of causation. The cause of illness may be immediate and direct. Remember that. Penyebab can be immediate. Penyebab yang, yang rapat. Eh? And direct. Direct A, B. There is no intermediate. It may be also remote, very far, very distant. And indirect. So it is not straightforward. A causing B. It may go through certain other variable. Underlying the observed association. But the aims of occupational, of course, uh, he was presenting this in occupational conference, and almost synonymously preventive medicine in mind, the decisive question is whether any changes in B influence the changes of A. So in this case, whether B causing A or not. So this is the, the, the muqaddimah, the the, ta'aruf, the the introduction of the the, the write-up, you can go back and read uh, this one in 1965, you search this paper, uh, just only a few pages on it. Go back and read, uh, so this is very interesting. So basically, he outlined this, uh, the criteria for us to say A causing B. For A to cause B, the relationship must fulfill all these nine uh, guidelines, okay? The strength association, consistency, specificity, temporality, by the gradient, or those response, possibility, coherence, experiment, and analogy. So I hope you go back and read because I don't have time to teach one by one. You have learned this in your one. Make sure you go back and read. Make sure you go back and read. Seriously, I can ask you an exam. Okay, now, um, I've having taught you, mentioned to you about uh, causality, uh, to make everything easy. So we try to visualize uh, this uh, relationship by this bubble chat. You call it bubble chat. Uh, there are many names to it. Uh, web causation conceptual framework, conceptual or theory, 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 uh, theoretical framework, or path analysis, or the other name is statistical framework. Uh, and then there are also certain certain format like directed, directed aesthetic graph, a certain format to draw the, uh, the, the bubble chart, not just simply draw as you like. The, you must know which one is the circle, which one is the rectangle, so how you draw the arrow, how the arrow go in and go up. So there are standard if you want to go to very standard, but doesn't mean that you must do that. But if you do that, that will be very, very good and impressive. So I will show you um, the role of that variable. Remember, I sh in my first slide, I mentioned about the green and the red, only two, only two bubble there, only two variable. So there will be, in reality, there should be third variable. So if we are interested to study factor one and factor two, for example, but you know that, uh, and then maybe in, maybe there will be a factor two, which is uh, also independently uh, affecting outcome. Why I say independently? Because you can see that factor two and factor one is not related here in this example. So they are they are affecting outcome independently. They are not related to one another, and they uh, affect uh, the outcome. Uh, we can also have factor three, which is also independent in this case. However, if we study further and we see that factor one and three is actually associated to some degree, there are some relationship to certain degree. So this can become more complicated. And this one, you have another factor four that also indirectly related to outcome. Indirectly, why? The factor four affecting outcome through factor two. And we can also have this situation where factor five is not affecting factor two or outcome directly, but they this factor five affecting the relationship instead. Okay, so this is three kind of third variable. The third variable can be like factor three or factor two or factor five. These are the third variable. Okay, this is the third variable for factor four and factor uh, and outcome. This factor five is the third variable for factor two and outcome. Factor three here, or maybe factor one here, if I'm talking about factor three, maybe the uh, third variable for factor one and outcome. If I'm talking factor one, factor one can be the third variable for factor three and outcome. So the name of it is that, this is what we call as confounder. 
this is called mediator mediate mediator all right and this is called effect modifier so effect modifier so this is the effect so it modify the effect or we call moderator it moderate the, the effect i pause here for a while you understand or not uh prof yep uh, i would like to ask uh what is, what is the uh difference between effect modifier or moderator with uh mediator because they are like in the middle of between two variables uh, it's very obvious here um mediator is orang tengah uh, which is in between two variable factor 5 is not in between you you do not see any any arrow towards the so um yeah in term of if you want to understand uh, beyond statistics a bit difficult here in term of conceptual but it will if it will modify the effect only it is not uh, okay um this is actually this is part of uh, my multivariate lecture so for me to go deep into multivariate uh, it will may take a very long time but uh, mediator here means that uh, it is in the pathway on the pathway it it is this is one in the pathway but factor 5 here the mod effect modifier moderator or interaction we call it is not in the pathway that is different you can identify the difference between mediator and uh, effect modifier so uh, for example yeah mediator ni um there are two genes there are two types of mediator one we call full mediation like this one full mediation or you can also have we call it uh, partial mediation partial mediation means you see that the, if this is a mediator this must be significant this relationship also must be significant then others other relationship must cannot be significant uh, if you talking about this three variable outcome factor 2 and factor 4 so this one must be significant this one significant and there is no other significant uh, relationship so we call it full mediator full mediation effect of factor 2 however if this is significant this is significant and there's another another arrow factor 4 directly to outcome also significant so we call this one as partial mediation effect what if this one this one not significant this one significant so this is not a mediator for it to be called mediator this when this must be significant because it must be it must set in on the on the on the uh, on the line okay factor 5 here is not affecting directly okay now can you see this in multivariate analysis can you see this one yes but not simple regression no you must do higher than uh, later dr adil will teach you about logistic regression linear regression it will go higher than that you must go to path analysis then you will see whether this one is effect modifier or mediator you can suspect from regression you can suspect statistic it will give some indication this is mediation this is mediator but you must suspect first then you test it then we'll tell the difference between mediator and uh, modifier i'm sorry i don't think i can i can explain a very good uh, explanation here because it requires uh, uh, another set of uh, uh, lecture i hope that is uh, suffice for su sufficient for the time being for those who are asking just now, I can see you. Is it okay? Thank you, Prof. All right. Anything else? I hope you understand about this conceptual framework. Uh, here, I, I illustrate the importance of the third variable. So, uh, in this case, in this case, yeah. Example, I give you uh, everything can um, just a label you give a label for moderator, mediator label. Why is it like that? Because, uh, for example, like confounding effect, this one. Let's say look at three, these three variable. When I say third variable means uh, there are only three variable at this uh, uh, explanation. One, two, three. Factor one, factor three, outcome. All right. Confounder, uh, factor three is the confounder. All right. Factor three is the confounder. So the issue is factor one also can be confounder, right? Because just sama je diagram ni. It, isn't it? Factor three is confounder. But if I change this label, I, I put up factor, uh, above factor one. So which is similar. No different. Only that this is one, this is three, right? Yes. Yes, bro. So, yes, bro. Ah, so it is the perspective. So your interest is to study 
factor 1 and outcome. I repeat, your interest is to study factor 1 and outcome. Let's say your interest is to study uh, um, what uh, oral uh, 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 how should I give um, oral uh, uh, mouse wash like Listerine, Oral-B, mouse wash, all those things, gargle, all those things. Let's say I said that the, using gargle, this, using uh, alcohol-based mouse wash, this one, you can get oral cancer. Let's say the outcome is oral cancer. All right. But and you, you, you would like to prove that using those, uh, those mouse wash cause, causing uh, oral cancer. But the, more, the most important confounder in this rela relationship of oral cancer is smoking. People, because who normally like to use uh, gargle or, or, or Listerine and always carry a small uh, bottle of Listerine inside the pocket because they smoke. If they smoke, they want to remove the smell of the uh, cigarette. So they will gargle. They always use mouthwash. So who use frequently? Those smoker. You see, so for you to study factor one, who is, uh, which is uh, the, you, uh, using mouthwash, and oral cancer, you must include smoking. If not, you will not get this uh, relationship here, the arrow here, to be the net effect. Only when you get the net effect, after you adjust the effect of smoking, then you can say that, yes, using mouthwash is able to cause lung, uh, oral cancer. However, if you do not include factor three, you, not, you do not consider this as the confounder, so, uh, so you will not going to see that you will get this one significant, but this one, why this one significant? Not because of mouthwash is, is the, the main factor. No, because those who use mouthwash actually smoking that you do not adjust for, you do not control for, you do not take that into account. So that this, this becomes confounder. All right. So I hope you understand uh, uh, the approach of this distant variable. For that, I give you another example. Again, about smoking. This is about smoking behavior and cessation services among male physicians in China. Uh, they are using SEM. Uh, SM, I told you about path analysis, yeah, right? I said that a simple regression may not be able to show this, this uh, level of the variable. So you must use path analysis and above, including SEM, structural equation modeling. Okay, now this is the smoking behavior, which is the independent variable here. And then the outcome is the, the dependent variable is the uh, the prescription for stop smoking, cessation services. Uh, this model is used for male physician only. They will exclude um, female physician in China. So they want to know. Of course, uh, you heard the, 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 the term that uh, do as I told you, uh, if you are a doctor, uh, but don't do what I do, isn't it? Uh, so if the doctor is uh, a uh, smoker, it is a smoker. So they, they said that uh, Pakcik uh, don't smoke even though I am also a smoker. Uh, that is not whether that's that's uh, that's going to if to to if to affect uh, the the service or not. Uh, some said that no, I'm being very professional even though I smoke. I still encourage people to stop smoking. Is it true or not? So the study done to to know whether there is a bias, conflict of interest or not. All right. So this is the, study, the result. Structural equation modeling. You can see that it's very complicated uh, causal framework. So let me guide you. Basically, the, the most important variable is two. Smoking and the services prescribed, offered. Smoking, service. However, there are so many other factors that also give an effect to the relationship. You can see there are some, some rectangle variables, some um, uh, circular like this one, uh, over like this one, and then you can see that some arrow are going to this direction, some arrow are going to this direction, a bit weird, isn't it? So, uh, not that weird actually, but you must know what is SEM is all about, so then you understand. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but basically look here. Smoking, smoking cessation. Whether a smoker, physician, prescribe or not, smoking cessation. After consider all these variables and relationships. So this value here, 0 0.87, is the value of odds ratio, odds ratio, after considering all these variables, regardless whether they are 
significant or not significant. Like this one, this one is not significant. This one is significant, but odd ratio more than one. This one is uh, significant, but odd ratio less than one. So this is the 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 clean, the net uh, effect of smoking physician, whether they give, they, they prescribe, they ask their patient to stop smoking or not. So 0 0.87 odds ratio. What do you think? Anyone can guess? Anyone can interpret that one? Anyone? Ni yang online susah. Okay, Azlan. Mana Azlan is one? Saya, Pro. Okay. Can you interpret? Mm. 0.7 means what? You are from, uh, the, you have done family accident for two weeks already. Oh, okay. okay. So, 0 0.87. Yeah. Smoking cessation services. Come on. Mm. Likely or less likely to prescribe a smoking cessation service? Likely, likely or less likely to ask the patient to stop smoking? Likely. Likely. So if yeah. he's a smoker, he is likely mm. to ask the patient to stop smoking. If a doctor, if the doctor is mm. smoker, if the doctor is smoking, so he is likely to yeah. ask the patient to stop smoking compared to the non-smoker. Likely. Likely. Mm. Okay. Hamiza. Uh, not likely, doctor. Not likely. Okay, Hana, Hanif. Okay. Ah, so um, <coughs> less likely. Less likely. Hmm. Okay, sebabkan dia boleh teka kan? Ia ke tak senang je lah. Lama lah jawab ikut suka. Uh, the answer is less likely because less than one. Because this is odd ratio, right? Odd ratio, ratio, ratio. When you say about ratio, the null value is one. If you talk about percentage, the null value is zero. So you will talk something above zero or below zero. I mean, zero means of null, lah. Not, no, 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 apa, not, uh, not significant, not, bukan not significant. Um, no value, lah. But color ratio, the null value is one. So either it's above one or under one. And when you talk about smoking, they always compare to the non-smoker. So smoker, smoker here smoking. Those who smoke, nampak tak the value? Less than one. Less than one means less likely to prescribe smoking cessation to the patient. So if you are smoking, you don't bother whether your patient berhenti merokok ataupun tidak. You are not bothering about that. So this is, this is how the study have proven. But uh, that you can do this one by having two variable only. But this study conclude 0 0.87 odd ratio after they considered all these variable. So that's my point. That's my point. Okay, compared to by variable analysis. Okay, uh, uh, I, I'm going to the next one level of measurement. The third things you need to understand. The first one is the representativeness. Number two is about relationship. Number three is about level of measurement. So now you know the importance of the variable. So next important is to understand what the variables are. I mean, how to measure those variables. So there are many books uh, about um, variable. And then um, uh, this one has been uh, mentioned even since 1946, yeah? About nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. So this has been talked a lot. So I'm not going to go into detail about this one. This is a very simple topic. Go back and read, please. Eh? Please go back and read the differences between nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. A very good um, uh, apa? Uh, short notes questions. And then these are the, the one that I mentioned here. Uh, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Nominal, ordinal, we group together as categorical. <coughs> categorical. Example, nominal is gender and race, whereby the rank is not, order or rank is not important. Ordinal also categorical, but where the rank, the order, susunan dia, the sortment, is important. When you talk about cancer staging, uh, stage one, two, three, four is different than uh, two, and mean, mean that uh, they are importance of uh, order. 
numerical you can talk about uh, temperature for example interval but for statistics as long as you lump them together as numerical is enough so basically for our uh, practical session if you identify it between nominal ordinal and numerical that will be enough sufficient for you to differentiate for every variable for every variable for every bubble chart in your diagram so you must uh, recognize the how do you measure it all right so basically i will not go into into into, into different into into detail about it because i don't really have time go back to look at why you need to know the level the purpose the way to describe what are the statistical tests to use and then there is even hierarchy what do i mean by hierarchy example like age age can be <coughs> age can be a uh, ratio the age right age zero means you are not born yet eh? you are not born gone tak ada tak wujud lagi zero uh, but age also you can you can group or categorize it into uh, ordinal right or you you don't bother about the rank it become nominal so age can be converted into categorical if you like so but then because of because of age can be numerical so in terms of what you can do with age there are so many things that's why hierarchy of uh, the use of the data is higher when the data can be captured can be measured numerically right so don't simply categorize early your your data when you categorize you will lose the 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 power the statistical power of it all right the last one i would like to mention here is distribution of data um the 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 the, the philosophy of maxson is all about uncertainty uh, science of of uncertainty that's why you go to the ward you see that uh, one antibiotic may do good to one patient but the same antibiotic may not good to different patient with the same disease so because why there are so many uncertainty we try to uh, be very objective but there are many time that we are not able to do that all right so basically uh, this is about distribution of data how your data distribute so basically for your part for practical session you this one there especially for numerical data for categorical you cannot distribute the curve you cannot you get the curve but the number of the the number of the um, the event yes you can you can get the curve but basically when the variable is numerical the next question is normal or not normal i repeat if the variable i said variable have the dual categorical numerical if it is numerical next is normal or not normal understand category uh, data measurement categorical or numerical if categorical don't, don't ask this question it does not apply to categorical data but if it is if variable is numerical you must ask normal or not normal example h h you describe h you 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 use the numerical value h as reported 20 years old 21 years old 40 years old you do not categorize into young old so therefore this age is numerical so then you, you ask is the age normal or not normally distributed again the word is normal and not normal jangan sebut normal or abnormal pula because normal is noun kata khas normal or not normal bukan normal or abnormal yeah this is not a symptom normal or not normal distribution normal is noun the other name is gaussian distribution uh, who who discovered it ws gossett who discovered this one so the characteristic of the normal distribution is must be bell shaped curve symmetrical and uni model like this one and uh, why normal distribution because many biological psychological variables distributed normally and many so many so you this is the line curve this is histogram this is the uh, cdf eh? uh, if you want this is quite similar to the normal distribution so that's the characteristic of normal distribution how to check for normal distribution um i i'm not tailored towards your practical session you can there are two method you do that subjectively descriptively qualitatively or you measure it objectively using a, normal, a test of normality i prefer number one i don't really prefer number two all right it can be either one <clears throat> um, so for descriptive you use you look at the histogram with normal curve or if since the other will teach you about r you will look at the qq uh, qq plot so something like this one so this is the script later you will learn in dr adil's class uh, using r code so you can get you can get the histogram distribution and then you look at the the line curve and then you decide from this one you decide whether it is normal or not normal just describe subjective very subjective and then you use qq plot like this one so if there is many observation on this line so we can call it as normal again 
they are, you can see here, they are tail out of extreme values here. This is the same data. They are extreme values over here. So, how, is it normal or not normal? Subjective. The answer is subjective. Okay? Up to you to decide. Hmm. That's a very difficult situation, right? Uh, so, but then that's the, even when I was doing my, my sabbatical in, in Germany and Bristol also, uh, among us also, we just eyeballing the description. Okay. Or if you can also uh, plot like this one using uh, GGR plot, you can get, get the, some, uh, uh, some confidence level. So anything, uh, bubble, any, any dots inside this, this, uh, this uh, 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 shaded area is considered as acceptable value. Okay, uh, and number two is about test of normality. There are many tests. So, with regard to uh, R, you can do Shapiro test. There's so many tests you can get the, you, you will get the status. And then this one, they will tell you whether uh, significant or not. If like this one, if significant means that it is not normally distributed. So, again, Dr. Adi will teach you about the two methods. My, uh, my, my advice to you is that why I say I prefer number one rather than the objective measurement of normality test. Because normality test, when the sample is small, always pass a normality test. When the sample size is small, like like what, like for fifty, like 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 one hundred, uh, even less than fifty. So it's, when you when you do normality test, they say that normal. When the sample size is very big, like forty thousand people, a small deviation from normality, and then the test will say that not normal. How can a sample size with forty thousand become not normal? Very difficult to to accept. That's why, uh, because of that, not many people really look into normal test. The other indicator that normal test is not really established because you see here, this is not exhaustive yet. There are so many tests. So many people trying to measure uh, normality. So many people. Anderson and Darling, Kolmogorov and Smirnov, and then for Professor Lilofo uh, came and then tried to modify the test. And then all these tests, uh, Jack Berra test and so many tests. So we need to say that people are attempted to, cal to calculate or to measure objectively. It is not as easy as that one. Uh, so many, many mazhab. So because of that, <clears throat> that's why I still go back to the, to, the, to the principle, which is look at the symmetrical of data like this one. Like I mentioned here, the bell-shaped curve, symmetrical and unimodal. All right. Um, so what, what would you do if the change is not normal? If you find your numerical value is not normal, first check back your data entry. Maybe there are some uh, data entry error. By right, the age is 20, but you entered 200 years old. So it's obviously a skewed value. So check your uh, entries one by one. And then if, if everything is okay, you transform the data. From not normal, you can transform to become normal. Transform means what? You lock it, you anti-lock it. You, you, you can do so many things, we call, we call it a link function. You can do whatever you like, and then you transform the data. And then you analyze based on the transform data. You can ask for the me later, or you can ask from Dr. Adil when during practical sessions. Or you don't want to do all those things, you use non-parametric tests. So when you analyze later, Dr. Adil will teach you uh, what is parametric test, what is non-parametric test. Parametric test assume data to be normally distributed. But non-parametric test, like cruz um, uh, man with new test, uh, uh, so these are the tests that do not have that assumption. So it is so robust that it can test even data is not normal. So that's the easiest part, actually, number three. Okay, any question? There are four things I taught you already. Representativeness, relationship, level of measurement, distribution, four things. Okay, four things. This is essential for you before you do your practical later. Okay, now, how it will be used. So I told you already, uh, in practical later, you will learn two, two things. One to describe, one to uh, do the analytical or to, to do the comparison. So descriptive, a single variable. <clears throat> analytical is multiple variable. When you are interested to study only one variable, normally it becomes a descriptive statistics. When you start comparing, multiple variable, it become, become analytical statistics. When you have, <coughs> you, you compare, you must have hypothesis. If you don't compare, you don't have any hypothesis. But in fact, descriptive can generate hypothesis. All right. But if you are interested to test hypothesis, this become analytical statistics. All right. Uh, and if you want to study causality, A causing B obviously is more than one variable. So it is must be analytical statistics. 
So basically, I divide the data again. I mentioned just now, descriptive analytical. This one is univariable. This one, example like uh, blue and uh, red uh, colored circle here. I put V, variable, variable, where I don't put uh, uh, whether they are independent or not because I'm not interested to study the relationship. So in this by variable analysis, you can see that only two variable involved. So once you have this arrow, so you assign the role. This is independent, this is dependent. Make sure you understand which one is dependent, which one is independent. Example like cholesterol and sex, uh, jantina, male, female. So you, you want to study whether there is a relationship between male and female in terms of their cholesterol level. So if you put sex as your dependent, so today you can be male, tomorrow you can be female. Is that true? Depending on your cholesterol level. Hmm. Dr. Samson was not going to will be very agree with that. Lah. So therefore, you must make sure you know where to put your variable to be dependent or independent variable. It depends on your literature review and your understanding. And then multivariable analysis when you have more than two variables. Yeah, uh, Examples I will skip. So what to do with all the data? <clears throat> this is descriptive, how to describe a data. So um, I told you, when you have a data, you check normal or not normal, uh, sorry, check numerical or categorical. If num numerical, check normal or not. If normal, use mean and standard deviation. If not normal, use median and IQR. If categorical, do not need to check for normality. Just describe using count and percentage. This is the statistical uh, descriptor. All right. For an article uh, later, Dr. Dr. Adil will uh, explain to you the great detail. I will not going. I will stop here because it's already 9 a.m. Uh, Dr. Adil, uh, your class, Dr. Adil, is, is what time? 10 p.m. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Right. So uh, the last bit, because I have a bit of time, um, when I say compare data, uh, you can you can compare means like this one, you can compare proportions like this one, or in regression you can compare the slope, the gradient here. So I just give the gist of the word compare here. This is the analytical component. I repeat again, this is the descriptive how you describe a data, and later you will learn about how to compare means, how to compare proportions, how to compare slopes in regression. Okay, so. This in this word in this diagram, you are not interested to study uh, two variable. You are not compare for every variable. If numerical normal, use mean and standard deviation. For every for every single variable which is numerical not normal, you describe. If you want to describe, you describe using median and uh, anything but uh, not the product of mean like IQR, like minimum, maximum, like range. As long as uh, the the variability here is not the product of mean. The product of mean means in the formula, there is no X bar. There is no mean in the formula. Example like variance, standard deviation. Standard deviation, variance, if you look at the formula, inside the formula, you have X bar, the, the mean. Form, the mean. So SD, standard deviation, is the product of mean. But IQR is not the product of mean. Because data is not normal, so you cannot use mean. So there must be reason why you can't use mean. Again, go back and read. Because uh, one of the popular question is what is the difference between mean and median? So when you use mean, when you use median, why you use median, why not mean? So go back and read. And categorical, obviously there is no distribution, no need for check for normality. You describe using n, the count, the frequency, and the percentage. Meanwhile, for comparison later, you will learn from Dr. Adil how to compare means. Example, mean hemoglobin between male and female. There are two variables there, hemoglobin and sex. So mean HB, as long as uh, the HB hemoglobin is normally distributed, you use mean. So you compare the mean between HB male and HB female, who have higher HB uh, in normal circumstances, for example. So you know from your study that, from hematology class, that um, uh, female have higher hemoglobin, right? And then uh, proportion, you want to compare uh, proportion hypertension, prevalent hypertension between male and female, for example, who have uh, in normal population who have higher prevalent of hypertension. Again, the higher would be the, the, the men here because men is higher risk to become uh, hypertensive compared to female. Uh, but uh, when you talk about, uh, uh, when, when, the, the, when we talk about elderly population, for example, 
there is no different of proportion hypertension because the female lost the the their, their estrogen protection already. So therefore, they also have the similar risk to develop hypertension. Okay, proportion example example. And slopes when you compare two different regression model, which one is uh, uh, I mean higher in terms of uh, gradient compared to the other? In this one, it's very obvious that um, for every one change of x, one unit change of x, there will be higher change of y in in one compared to two. I'm not sure whether you understand what I'm, I'm to say here. This is very mathematic here. Uh, you guys are all a a plus kind of eight maths, right? So it should be easy for you to understand this by right. So you have two slope here, two, two regression here, one and two. So obviously for every one unit change of X, so how, which one have, uh, can give the bigger change of Y? Obviously the number one, kan? the best, the best tip, the best tip. So if you what three figures ni, slope sini, so Y here is higher than Y here. Uh, the, the change of Y in, in two, is smaller than the change of y in 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 one for every one unit of x. Okay, so those are mathematics, but to be used in uh, statistics. I think that's all. Unless you have any questions, any questions, guys? Mm, so yeah, saya nak tanya. Saya nak tanya. Um, boleh ke kalau dalam satu data tu kita compare guna tiga tiga cara sekaligus? Uh, it depends on suitability and depends on your objective. Actually, uh, you can't, for example, because you can do, you, you have the, the software, you want to blast out everything. No, you cannot. You should look at the objective. Your objective is to look, to, to, to detect difference, or you want to measure the, the big, how big the difference is, or you want to measure the trend. So there's a different level of, uh, of comparison. Uh, when I say that, let's say that there's, uh, let's say you look at number one and two, eh? look at tengah ni, for example. So you look here. Uh, if I ask a question, is there a difference between one and two? The answer is yes. Yes. So you, you just answer. I, my question is, do you do? Is there a difference between one and two? The answer is yes. You stop there because I ask, is there a difference? So you want to detect the presence of different, but the next information you can obtain from the same analysis is how different number two and number one, right? How big is the difference? You can measure the difference. So number one, my first question, is there a difference? Which is to ask about the presence of different. So you will, you will do a test of differentiation and then they will tell you there is a difference, full stop. But there also a test that can tell you how big the difference is, whether the difference is, is so big, become this added information. So it is not that just uh, okay. If you the answer is yes, that is different between one and two. So it could be that one is higher than two, or two is higher than one, right? I repeat, if the if the, the answer to the question is yes, that is a different. So that kind of answer does not tell you which one is higher. It simply tell you that is a different. So there is a, a, a test for that. There is also another test to tell you whether two is higher than one or one is higher than two. Ah, so again, the answer to your question, a very good question, is depending on the objective of your hypothesis. What is your hypothesis? What do you want to see? What is the hypothesis? What is the alternate hypothesis? Dr. Adi will talk about this so much. So hypothesis is, is easy, but what you really want is the alternate. What is the answer for the hypothesis? What is your expectation of the, the comparison? So you should try to do the one that answer your what you want, uh, not not just simply do everything. Okay, I hope that answer that question. Thank you, bro. All right. Any other question? Good question. Any other question? Um, I wanna ask. Yes. I'm, I'm Husna. Yes, Husna. Uh, you mentioned before, if the data is not normal, we have to transform the data. Yep. What do you mean by transforming the data? All right. Oh, where is this like? Hmm. Uh, transform data, uh, this one is to be illustrated clearly in the practical session. So basically like this, uh, if, let's say you have uh, you have um, um, homocysteine data. Let's say you have homocysteine variable. Uh, you collect homocysteine. I'm not sure whether you know what is homocysteine is. Indicator of cardiovascular disease, but not really good. Uh, so homocysteine level. So, but the homocysteine level is not normal. When you look at the graph, it is skewed. 
uh, mean uh, you check the data entry it is correct still still not normal therefore what you should do so you transform the data so data is uh, is just uh, the number or the value of homocysteine for every patient value so what you do to that data is let's say you 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 lock it you lock that one lock base 10 and then x so this x is homocysteine oh, yes, yes. so you lock it so you got lock homocysteine so that is the meaning of transform and then you analyze on that lock value not the the raw value the lock value so lock is one of the transform tool okay transform function sorry okay okay thank right. you prof okay cuma dalam case ni uh, the statistical analysis is done on the lock value uh, your description should not be in lock people become got con got confused right so bila you not describe you can anti lock balik lah tapi the statistic you can apply with the lock it is okay uh, meaning to say that any st statistics you applied on the transform data the 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 significant to can be applied even for the for the non lock function uh, only the statistical part of it okay any other question Okay, kalau tak ada, then I think that's all from me. Uh, the class uh, is going to be very uh, technical because we are going to use R. Uh, I think Dr. Ade later will explain to you why we use R, not SPSS. Because SPSS, one, is very heavy and you have to install in your computer. And after all, SPSS is very expensive. Uh, R is free, very, uh, very robust, very powerful uh, uh, tool. However, the learning curve is quite steep. Uh, you have to learn but uh, i was i got feedback that most of you are able to do it so you have to really spend a lot of time with it because because of that we you can see that we don't have have a back to back kind of lecture we give some time for you to study i think that's all from me thank you so much uh, guys uh, inshallah uh, we see each other uh, soon hopefully when the covid uh, when the when covid 19 uh, uh, is stable inshallah with that i thank you Subhanallah bihamdi subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika asyhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamualaikum. Thank you bro. Thank you bro. Thank you bro. Thank you bro.